guys, my name is Masi Kosi and welcome back to Holy Tea with Masi. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you find what you're looking for and please be sure to click the subscribe button down below. To my usuals, thank you for returning. I appreciate the support and without any further ado, let me get straight into today's video. So today's video is a Bible study um, of Psalm 23. Uh, this is something that I've been wanting to do since last week because um, I came across Psalm 23 in a different version and I was like, wow, this is like a love letter. And I've just really been wanting to do a Bible study on it. However, for the past two days, I've been praying about uh, a couple of things that are going on in my life right now. And I realized that yesterday, right after praying, um, there was this song that was just on my heart. It's Psalm 23 by uh, People and Worship, I think, or People and Music. I'm not too sure. <laughs> this is so bad. Um, but I will link the song down below. And it's basically just Psalm 23 in song form, in song formation. And that was the song that was on my heart after praying. So what I did was I wrote down what I prayed about. And then I just, on top, I wrote Psalm 23. And then this morning, after reading my Bible, I prayed and I prayed about other stuff and I prayed um, about what I was reading today. I was meditating on that word. And then I also started praying about the stuff that I was praying about yesterday. And again, guys, immediately after saying Amen, I just burst into song and I started singing, The Lord is my shepherd. And that's the Psalm 23 song. And I was like, okay, okay then I definitely, definitely need to read this. I think maybe God is trying to say something to me, you know? So I was, I was like, okay, cool. So I grabbed my Bible, grabbed my book. I made some notes. I started going through Psalm 23 from the first verse until the last one. And I was just writing down some notes. Here are some notes that I took down, took down some notes. And as I was going, I was like, okay, cool. I see what God is saying to me here about the things that I prayed about. But obviously in my own time, I'm just going to look at the stuff that I was praying about and just really look at what God is saying in Psalm 23 in relation to every single thing that I was praying about. But I've already seen some answers um, for my prayers. So yeah, so I'm just going to do the Bible study. But as you can already see, I've already done my notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Psalm 23. Um, and then obviously just write the notes for that verse and so on that I've already written Please grab your Bible, grab a pen, grab a pencil, whatever the case may be Grab your notes, uh, your notebooks and let's do this Okay, I'm going to read the first verse It says, you Lord are my shepherd, I will never be in need What I did there was I wrote down shepherd. What's the definition of a shepherd? What is a shepherd? And what I found was a shepherd is someone who guides and directs towards a certain direction. And that is what a shepherd does, obviously, a shepherd and a sheep. He guides them and he directs them towards a certain direction. And if God is our shepherd, then that's what God does. He guides us and he directs us towards a certain direction. Why does a shepherd do that? Because he cares for them. So God guides and directs us because he cares for us. He doesn't want us to go on the wrong path. He wants us to go on the right path. And that is why he will guide and he will direct us. Still in verse 1, it says, I will never be in need. Some versions say, I lack nothing. And I was asking myself, okay, so then why do you lack nothing? And I was like, okay, but then we were just told that he guides and directs. But then why do I lack nothing? And then I started to visualize myself as an actual sheep. And here's the shepherd that guiding and directing me. I'm a sheep, like an actual sheep. <laughs> if I'm a sheep and I'm busy going around, man, man, you know, and the shepherd is saying, okay, here's some water, here's some grass, eat, drink, here's your food, here's your whatever that you need. Then obviously I lack nothing because he is there. He is telling me exactly where to go. He's a shepherd. He knows his job. He knows exactly where I can find the best grass. He knows exactly where I can find the best water. And that is why I lack nothing. That is why we lack nothing. Because Christ knows exactly what we need and when we need it. As he is our shepherd. Okay, and then verse 2 says, You let me rest in fields of green grass. You lead me to streams of peaceful water. It starts off It starts off by saying, you let me rest. And then it says, you lead me to peaceful waters. So what I wrote down there was rest and peace 
comes from God. And this is for people who are always like, you know, oh, you were supposed to be my peace. I thought you were going to be my peace, but now you're making me angry. Oh, this job was going to be my peace. If you do not have peace from God, you're not going to have peace with all the other things and all the other people in your life. So that is what I understood from verse 2, that peace comes from God first. And when you have peace from God, that peace will enable you to be at peace with everyone and everything else in your life. And then I also just noted the part about water. Water refreshes us. When we are thirsty, water quenches our thirst. And that to me, he also brought the whole um, thing of Christ being the living waters, being living waters. So when we are thirsty, we get a drink from Christ, our living water, who quenches our thirst forever. If you get your drink from Christ, you don't need it anywhere else because he will quench your thirst forever. When you drink from him, you drink once and for all. The Passion Translation um, with verse 2 says, You lead me to an oasis of peace, a brook of bliss. An oasis is basically a spot in a desert that has water and palm trees and all that good stuff. So you picture a desert, guys. I want to insert a picture. Picture that desert. It is dry all around. There is no water all around. There are no trees. There is no place of rest all around except for that tiny spot. And that is where Christ leads us. When we are in a desert, we are in dry season, we feel like, oh my gosh, things are not going the way that they should be. I'm lost. God, what do I do? God, where do I go from here? What is the next step from here, God? I've heard what you said. I've done step A, but what is step B? God, talk to me. God, help me. God, I am tired. He says, he takes you through that desert and it takes you to the oasis where you can be refreshed where you can drink water where you can rest where your soul can be restored and renewed and revived and that is also what verse 3 talks about that says that and you refresh my life you are true to your name and you lead me along the right paths so there in that oasis he refreshes you he restores your life he revives you and he gives you that energy to go to go on he gives you that desire to keep on going and he gives you what you need to survive and he sustains you he fuels you in that oasis what about a brook of bliss of bliss a brook of bliss is a stream and bliss is a state of like you know complete and utter joy and what i found on the internet is that Bliss is usually used in marriage to describe a married couple, you know, that, that they are in marriage bliss, but it's also used to describe the happiness of heaven, eternal joy in heaven, heavenly bliss. And that is where God leads us. He leads us to an oasis of peace and a brook of bliss, guys. So not only does he restore, revive, and refresh, he also gives eternal joy in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I've basically also just discussed um, verse 3 with verse 2 as 1. Um, but another part of verse 3 that I want to mention is that when you, once you are revived, refreshed, restored, renewed, all of those things, then you are able to follow the path that God has set before you because now your energy is back. You went from 0 to 100. Your energy levels are there. Relationship with Christ is there. You are back and you are more ready to follow the path that he has put before you. He guided you and he gave you water. He gave you peace. He gave you rest. And now you are ready and you are fueled to go on the path that he has set before you. Verse 4. Verse 4 says, I may walk through valleys as dark as death. But I won't be afraid. You are with me and your shepherd's rod makes me feel safe. So I'm going to start with the first part that says I may walk through valleys as dark as death, but I won't be afraid. Passion Translation says, this is the CV that I just read, but the Passion Translation says that even though the path that you have set before me leads me to darkness or leads me through darkness, I'm paraphrasing, leads me through darkness, Fear will not conquer me because you already have. So that means that, yes, God will set a path before you that looks rosy and it's basically an oasis. He will set that path before you. However, there are times where that, in order to get to that oasis, you have to go through the desert. In order to get to that promised land, you're going to have to go through the dark valleys. You're going to have to go through the parts that you don't want to go through. You'll have to face the things that you don't want to face. But 
the psalmist says, saying, even though I have to walk through that path, I will not fear because you are with me and you have already conquered all of these things that I'm facing right now. You have conquered these demons. You have conquered this resistance. You have conquered what people say about me. You have conquered my worry. You have conquered my concerns. So I will not fear. I will just keep my eyes set on where you are leading me. God did not just say, okay, cool. We are now at the, at, at the oasis. So you have a drink and you rest and then you go along by yourself through that dark valley. No, he was with you in the oasis. He was with you in that brook of bliss. He was with you when you were drinking water. He was with you and he was guiding you. And he is still with you through that dark valley, through that path of darkness. And when I was reading this, there's a song that came to my heart by Hillsong. It's called Graves into Gardens. And there's a part that says, the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there is not a place where your mercy and grace won't find me again. So that just goes to show guys that the same God who was with you in the oasis is the same God who will, who will be with you in the valley. It's the same God who will be with you in the dark valleys. It is the same God that will be with you even then. And I don't know what more you need to hear. Obviously the entire chapter, but you know, that alone is just like, wow, wow. And the Passion Translation also says, um, you remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. We're still in verse four. So even in the valley of darkness, he remains close to you and he is with you all the way. He did not leave you, like I said, in the oasis. He did not say, girl, boy, you're on your own now. No, he went with you in that valley and he was with you all the way. He remained close to you. The entire time so that you will get to where he was sending you and then the second part of verse 4 that says you are with me and your shepherd's rod makes me feel safe other versions say your rod and your staff they comfort me so there a rod is something that looks like a club i'll show it it's used shepherds use it to like fight off wolves or whatever like wild animals they try to eat the sheep and obviously that's pretty self-explanatory God has that rod and he has that staff and he uses the rod to fight off the enemy, to fight off things that are fighting against you, to fight off things that are working against you. And then he uses, the staff has a hook and shepherds use it to, let's say a sheep falls into a hole or a ditch, then the staff, the shepherd will use the staff to pull out, to pull the animal out. And that is what God does. When you are stuck, you feel like you're stuck in that valley of darkness. You feel like people are just fighting against you. You feel like you're going nowhere. You feel basically stuck and you feel like you're at the end. He takes his staff and he grabs you and he pulls you and he carries you where you need to be. I don't know what else you need to know. I don't know. I feel like I just leave it there, honestly. I'm kidding. I'm going to carry on. So verse 5, and then verse 5 says, You treat me to a feast while my enemies watch. You honor me as your guest and you fill my cup until it overflows. So there, he treats you to a feast. What is a feast? A feast is a banquet. It has all the food you can imagine. Wine, water, champagne, whatever it has all of those things you know people are celebrating and what god is saying here is that even when your enemies dare to fight you even when the enemy is fighting against you even when the enemy is sending traps your way he's sending hate your way he's painting you a certain way i have given you a reason to celebrate i will give you a reason to celebrate in the midst of all of that um drama in the midst of all of of this scary situation in the midst of the storms in the valley I will give you a reason to celebrate. I will lay the table before you so you can celebrate. The part where it says, my cup runs over, my cup runneth over. I used to ask myself, what does that even mean? I remember I actually made notes on my Bible a long time ago, not today. And I wrote here, Holy Spirit, with a question mark. I was like, is this the Holy Spirit? In the Passion Translation, it did say, you anoint me with the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. So he fills you. He fills you with the Holy Spirit. He anoints you with oil. He anoints you with the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You're just going to be this glorious person, this anointed person, this happy person. And your enemies will think, why are we even fighting this person? 
What's the point of fighting somebody who is so happy, who's full of joy, who's celebrating while we're basically sending a text their way? What is the point? <laughs> so yeah, and then um, six says, your kindness and love will always be with me each year of my life and I will live forever in your house, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, um, adding on basically to what verse one, two, three, four, and five were saying, Adding on to all of that goodness, God is still saying, my goodness, my love, my kindness, my mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Some versions say pursue. What is it to pursue? To pursue is to chase. It's to stalk someone, basically. It's a stalk. It's chasing or stalking. You can even put it that way. Imagine being stalked by God's guide, kindness, by God's love, mercy, and goodness. Personally, I wouldn't call the cops to be like, hey, uh, Mr. Officer, uh, you know, God's kindness has been following me since 8. You know, when I was looking outside my window at 9 p.m., I saw God's mercy. Oh, you know, when I woke up at 5, God's love was right in front of me. I don't know how it got there. That is not something you'd call the cops on. That is something that is good. You're being, you're being followed. You're being stalked by God's goodness, love, and mercy. Imagine, just picture it. Like, turn it into a person, you know? Imagine you turning around at night and you just see by the window God's love is like this. Hey, what's up? And all of a sudden, you keep walking, you keep looking back and you just see God's mercy is following you. And you look this way. Oh my gosh, it's God's kindness. God's kindness. And you're looking that way. It's God's goodness. Oh my gosh, I'm being stalked by all these amazing things. That's it. Turn it into a human. Turn it into a human. Imagine. You know, be, you, you're basically like Mariah Carey. Like, why are you so obsessed with me? God's goodness, love, mercy, and kindness is obsessed with you. So guys, that's great, honestly. And then um, the Passion Translation says, And when my days are through, meaning that when my time on earth is up, I will still dwell in your house forever guys i don't know what else you need to hear i'm gonna close this book now i don't know what else you need to hear imagine being followed stalked by god's goodness mercy love and kindness all the days of your life and then still when your time is through on earth you are in his house eternally in his house dwelling in his house forever Guys, God is amazing and that is it for me today. I hope this spoke to someone today. It was just, yeah, I hope it spoke to someone today, guys. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and may God bless you. May you believe that he is with you on the mountains, on the valleys, in the oasis, in the valley. He is always with you, guys. And when your time is through on this earth, he will still be with you. You will be with him forever. You will be with him forever, guys. So that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed today's Bible study. Thank you for joining me. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I love you. May God bless you. Bye-bye.